KPIX CBS, San Francisco Bay Area, autopilot was in use before Tesla hit semi-trailer. This is now the fourth fatal crash involving a Tesla with autopilot turned on. And the details of this one, autopilot crashing into the side of an 18-wheeler, the car going underneath and getting the top sheared off. This is not the first time that it's happened. In fact, the details are eerily similar to another crash that happened just three years ago. According to the NTSB, back on March 1st, the Tesla was traveling on this Florida highway when the truck pulled out of a driveway to make a left turn and crossed right in front of the Tesla. The preliminary report says Tesla's autopilot system was active at the time of the crash. The driver engaged the autopilot about 10 seconds before the collision. From less than 8 seconds before the crash to the time of impact, the vehicle did not detect the driver's hands on the steering wheel. This is all that's left of the red Model 3. It went under the truck, practically shearing off the top half. The impact killed the driver. I found the Fast and Furious something like that's not possible because I saw them go under a semi once. Yeah. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. 50-year-old man, but the car kept on going another third of a mile. Crash data and video from the forward-looking camera show the car made no evasive maneuvers. Holy Jeez. moly. Jeez. That's scary. And thank you for the chat for pointing out the pre-stream thing. I turn it off. Pro pro mode, pro mode. Carrying on from this report because actually this is similar to one that was back in 2016. The details from this year's crash are very similar to an autopilot crash back in 2016. The 18 wheel tractor trailer, seen here colored in blue, turned left across the freeway. The Model S, colored in red, struck the trailer, passing underneath it, again shearing off the top half of the oh car. Oh my god. Today, Tesla released a statement that says, in part, autopilot was first engaged by the driver just 10 seconds prior to the accident, and then the driver immediately removed his hands from the wheel. Tesla drivers have logged more than 1 billion miles with autopilot engaged, and our data shows that when properly used by an attentive driver, who is prepared to take control at all times, drivers supported by autopilot are safer than those operating without assistance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I thought they were supposed to be autopilot. Yeah. What's, I think... the, what's the auto part? Yeah. Yeah, it's and not they... auto. It's assisted pilot or... Neither the data nor the videos indicated the driver or autopilot system braked or tried to avoid the trailer, the report stated. The Model 3 was going 68 miles per hour when it hit the trailer on US 441, and the speed limit was 55 miles an hour. The report said Tesla said in a statement Thursday that Banner did not use autopilot any other time during the drive before the crash. Vehicle logs show that he took his hands off the steering wheel immediately after activating autopilot, the statement said. Very weird. Very strange indeed. Well, something else I found interesting from that Washington Post article. Mm -hmm. uh, so they they said that the Tesla system was slower than other systems, and unlike system that systems that Consumer Reports have tested from General Motors and other companies. Interesting. Aren't they supposed to be the cutting edge? <laughs> Thought so. And then they also <laughs> say, uh, so this in addition to the previous crash cash that. Cast doubt on Musk's statement that Tesla will have a fully self-driving vehicle on the road sometime next year. And uh, Musk said last month Tesla had developed a powerful new computer that could use artificial intelligence to safely navigate the roads with the same camera and radar sensors that are now on Tesla cars. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> if if these trucks are having issues seeing the big semis. Because I don't know the reflection, or I don't. I'm not sure what the excuse is, but yeah, I don't see it coming, and that's what we touched upon last week. And we keep touching upon it, and people call us haters, 5G haters, or not 5G haters. Sorry, jumping to the next story. <laughs> well, <laughs> AI five, haters. But 5G and AI kind of go hand yeah, in hand. That's why I just say yeah. 5G AI saves us all. With Elon this, Musk, save us, save the world. And I guess you know you could argue if that truck was connected to the 5g network and they were talking to each yeah. other when it happened but you can't yeah. you know predict every scenario not Drop every packets thing. yeah <laughs> you know what i mean if you have <laughs> bandwidth you have wireless oh it's... that packet got dropped oops sorry <laughs> yeah the person's dead ah uh, we good yeah i think that brings us to our 5g All story right. <laughs> new york times your 5g phone won't hurt you but russia wants you to think otherwise the Russian network RT America aired the segment titled A Dangerous Experiment on Humanity and covering what it 
guest expert calls 5G's dire health threats. U.S. intelligence agencies identified the network as a principal meddler in the 2016 presidential election. Now it is linking 5G signals to brain cancer, infertility, autism, heart tumors, and Alzheimer's disease. Claims that lack scientific support. Analysts see RT's attack on 5G as geopolitically bold. It targets a new world of interconnected futuristic technologies that would reach into consumers' homes, aid national security, and spark innovative industries. Already medical firms are linking up devices wirelessly to create new kinds of health treatments. RT's assault on 5G technology are rising in number as the American wireless industry begins to erect 5G systems. In March, Verizon said its services will soon reach 30 cities. cities. Let's remember that. Verizon. Verizon. Let's remember Verizon in this. All right. RT, explosive New York Times, 5G ties uncovered. Rick Sanchez lays into New York Times, baseless and intellectually lazy attack on RT's America's coverage of potential health hazards posed by 5G radiation. And here's a clip. Here's the coverage that, yeah, let's just listen. Here's a sample of the coverage that they're criticizing. All the effects that I just listed, those are some of the effects that are known according to the technology that's being seen today. So. What happens when we roll out the next technology, 5G? How much more powerful is 5G? How much more troublesome might it be? The issue with 5G is that it will be impossible to walk outside without exposing yourself to this radiation because right. these small cells... It's true. Yeah. Towers are going to be everywhere. Now, Rick, you asked how we got here. We got here because the FCC, the organization that is supposedly supposed mm. to be regulating the wireless industry, has been completely captured by the wireless industry itself. <laughs> we know that the so called public servants or our representatives and all these government entities have really been captured by the wireless industry. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Now, that wasn't an accurate representation, though, so I will I would say RT bad on you because the. Even the New York Times piece goes into more. He brought on some experts and whatnot. I'm not really trying to support RT or I'm just upset that New York Times, their headline says, your 5G phone won't hurt you. They don't know that. Yeah. So, and now they're they're saying that the Russians are, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But let's listen to RT, explosive New York Times, 5G ties uncovered. Conflict of interest might be an understatement for the New York Times and its relationship with the telecom giant Verizon. The Times does advertisements for Verizon. Take a look at this one. Paid for and posted by Verizon. Wow, that's weird. In their anti-RT 5G yeah. article, they mentioned Verizon rolling out 5G. Yeah. It that's did, incredible. They didn't mention other companies, did yeah, they? Yeah, they, they love Verizon. <laughs> Verizon. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. This January, with Verizon's support, we're launching a new journalism 5G lab at The Times. Now, this lab's going to be based in our main newsroom. And it'll work very closely with Times journalists in New York City, across America, and around the world. So one, probably the U.S.'s largest 5G supplier, whatever you want to, provider, Verizon, is partnering with the New yeah. York Times. And then they write a story anti-RT because RT ran a piece that's anti-5G. Very suspicious. <laughs> Interesting. It'll partner with Verizon's Open Innovation Group and get early access to 5G technology and equipment. Doreen Tobin has been on the New York Times Board of Directors since 2004. Until 2009, she was Verizon's Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. After her retirement from Verizon, Tobin was given $3.5 million and then signed a year-long consulting contract that paid her a whopping $125,000 per month. <laughs> That's a lot of money. That's crazy. $125,000 a month? Not a year. Yeah, that was, that's a lot of money. As for the article's experts on 5G, Ryan Fox spent 15 years at the National Security Agency and was a computer analyst in the U.S. Army. Now he's an executive at the cyber intelligence firm New Knowledge, the very same firm that ran what its own internal report called an elaborate false flag operation <laughs> in the 2017 Alabama special Senate race. And then there's Molly McHugh, the neoconservative what? think tanker and registered foreign agent who once wrote that fighting a new Cold War would be in America's interest. So whose interest does this article serve, the American public or corporate shareholders? Reporting in Washington, Dan Cohen, RT. Wow. And that's a good question. <laughs> new York Times should be critical of 5G. Yeah. If anything, it's... Or at least ask questions. But they don't. That's true.
And another thing this kind of leads into is the whole fake news stuff. Yeah, and, everything. If you don't agree with it, yeah. it's fake news, fake news, fake news. Now they're just calling each other fake news. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and But that's also why I don't advocate for any sort of censorship because, mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're both supposed to be news yeah. organizations. But the New York Times is supposed to be the paper of truth. That's when true. When you go to RT but, on YouTube, it says funded by the Russian government. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. New York Times is supposed to be, oh, we're honorable. We're the you know, paper of truth. It's the... <laughs> Uh, if they're partnering with Verizon, you, they can't be credible on 5G. Yeah, They really can't. They can't. Well, that's the problem with advertisers. How can you speak against your advertiser? Which is why we don't have any advertisers in Healthy Talk Show. Exactly. It's value for value. HealthyTalkShow.com yeah. slash support. If you want to give us money, help support us. That'd yeah. be nice. Appreciate it. And we've gotten some support from yes. our chat. Our chat. But, gives us support. But this goes back to the... You know, since people aren't even questioning the 5G, how are we going to get traction for some research, too? Yeah. And we need independent research, not run by Verizon. But, and because physicians and scientists, you know, they're saying we don't know the effects. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of unknowns. We've covered them before. Yeah. But it's, it's, you should be allowed to question. Yeah. <laughs> but. Now, when there's commercial interest, these telcos are huge. Yeah, that's kind of worrisome. Cause a lot it's, of money there. It's your health that's at yeah. risk. And I guarantee you, when you get 5G, your phone bill will go will go up. It'll be more yeah. expensive. It's just a way to charge you more money. That's also true. Why can't we just stick with 4G and make it cheaper? Why can't for, we bring the cost of 4G down to $5 a month? <laughs> you know, why do we have to roll out this new... St- ah, yeah. Such, 4G is so fast. All right, one more RT story. CNN also ran this too what you need to know about LED lights. So this basically confirms past research. It's one of it, it's coming out of one of France's health agencies and they're telling us that the blue light from LED lights are toxic for our retina. It can accelerate the aging of retinal tissue hmm. and this of course contributes to bad eyesight and also progresses degenerative diseases. So Lights on your phones, tablets, uh, laptop screens, those don't damage your eyes as much as perhaps the industrial LED lights that you would see in an industrial space. But still, if you have chronic exposure to this, it, it has pretty um, insane health effects. And insane. the main thing that we're learning here that. is that it just... Dis- insane health effects. Come yeah. On. What does that even yeah, mean? Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> disrupts your body's biological rhythms, these circadian rhythms, yeah. which is your body's natural hormone cycle that tells you when it's time to be awake, when it's time to be asleep. When we disrupt these rhythms, we also aggravate a whole slew of metabolic disorders like cardiovascular disease, hmm. some forms of cancer, and diabetes. I believe that 100%. You need, most people need to sleep in darkness. Yeah, and there's been research that supported that, I yep. think. RT, how blue light affects you. Yes. Uh, I'm staring at this thing all day right. long. So, is this an LED light? Yes, yeah, so that's an LED screen that does have blue light in it. All of our screens have this type of light. And basically what's happening within our brain is that when our photoreceptors pick up blue light, it's a sign that it's daylight. It's time to be awake, right? Mm. And when they don't, it's a signal that it's time to sleep. And then we produce melatonin, which is the hormone that helps us sleep. So when we're staring at screens, to, um, a lot of the time at night, in the middle of the night, or even in the evening, we're basically tricking our bodies into thinking that it's daytime and we delay this melatonin production yeah yeah remedies a few things from the oh. article yeah oh, I, was... I have remedies i'll play that after. okay because there there is mm-hmm. a, some conflict of what is exactly damaging so some people say mm-hmm. that it's only at uh, higher intensities so below 455 nanometers but then now people are worried about the long-term consequences. So they're saying, you know, if we had very limited screen time, it may not matter. But the fact that we're on our phones all day, eight hours a day for, you know, our entire lives, what no one really knows what the long-term consequences yeah. are. And that's exposure in the higher ranges. Uh, and that could increase the risk of eye disease. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd really hate to see the effects of VR. Oh, that's because an those, that's a screen point. right up yeah. in your right up here. Yeah, that's why I don't roll with VR. I was always taught you're not supposed to have screens too close to your face because your eyes have to focus and you need to refocus. That's but true. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I was taught I some weird that. things, but I, I don't, 
So what about your yellow glasses? Yeah, well, the remedies, let's go. So there are actually a number of remedies. Um, the one thing that this uh, French agency basically cast doubt on are the glasses that I have here, which basically claim to filter out the blue light. They may do so a bit, but not all the way. It's not going to harm you. Like, really? It's not going to do. Can I try? You're not going to perceive a difference, I don't think. But, really? but definitely can, try. I mean, those definitely are not yellow ones. <laughs> Yours are really yellow. Yeah, I have really yellow ones too. Really, really yellow ones. But if I look at my computer right now, it's, if I look at my laptop? It's pretty much imperceptible because this is literally imperceptible light. It doesn't but make a damn difference. Literally make a imperceptible light. Eye, correct. Right. But basically, that does, what? It's what does that mean? Your eye is still taking it in, though. Yeah. <laughs> you still see. I'm... They claim that it, it, it slows it down, which is good. Um, the main thing that we have to think about here is that when you're about to go to bed, don't stare at your screen. So any light, like the wider, yep. the colder the light, the higher Filter. proportion is, there's blue in the spectrum, that's a higher risk. The mm. lower risk, of course, comes with these devices that we use every day, but since we do use them every day, in fact, American adults spend over 11 hours She's got you. Um, consuming some got sort you of media, usually with screens, uh, we should definitely look out for this type of thing. And so that number of... So kind of scary. Yeah. Also, I like how animated he is where he has to grab the laptop. Oh, yeah. He's a very animated guy. He's very, he's <laughs> so very entertaining. Funny. Yeah. He's very entertaining to watch. But, yeah, there wasn't really much uh, consensus on those yellow light blocking glasses either. Yeah. The results is... were pretty mixed, so. And there's just so many different ones out yeah. there, too. They have the Gunner, and then there's another brand out there that's even more expensive, and then there's the cheap brand that I wear. And you mentioned how, yeah, they have various different tintings, too, because some are more clear, and then some go all the way to that really dark yellow one you have. So I would assume that the dark yellow ones are more effective. More effective. But they didn't really blocking out some kind of light because they're shaded. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Thank you so much for watching. For more Healthy Talk Show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram at Healthy Talk Show, drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash live. Love and light.